Kokina Sendol Kake Mofaseda. We are wanderers, neutral and in service to all of New Eden. We rescue the lost and light the way through Thera. We sail forbidden seas. Come explore with us. Signal Cartel. Can't stop the signal. Hello everyone and welcome back to Talking in Stations. I'm your host, Rain, and I'm joined by our lovely engineer, Ben, and we have our special guest, Rix. So, hello, Rix. If you want to introduce yourself, a uh, few words, as many words as you want. Oh, sure. Hi, Eric. Good to be here. Been a while. Nice to see both of you again. And, uh, yeah, hello, I'm Rix. And, um, yeah, I'd say that's pretty much me, really. <laughs> so, Rix is being modest. He has done a lot Modern. for EVE Online. Um, I would say you've been around the block quite a few times, right? You run your own corp um, and alliance. Uh, you've participated in alliance tournaments. You've done art for EVE. Um, you've been on podcasts before. This is not definitely not your first, nor do I expect it will be your last. Um, and then a lot of community, I would say just in general community things. Um, so, you're on um, the latest. I don't know if latest is the right word. The one that's coming up most recent is your um, frigate free for all. Yeah, uh, yeah, we do this uh, once a year. I've often been asked why don't we don't do it, you know, three or four times, and, and the reason for that is because <laughs> it's really a big event. We this will be the tenth annual. It's actually um, the it'll be the fifteenth in a row. Um, we call it the tenth because it's the tenth that stay frosty because Stay Frosty's turning 11 in May. And the very first one that we did um, was during the transition when I left Tuskers and uh, created Stay Frosty in the first place. So as part of my, um, hey, don't, uh, don't war deck us and camp our stations, um, uh, Tuskers ended up keeping the uh, banner on the first one. So that's why this is the 10th annual, when it's actually the 15th in a row. But um, Back in back in those days, I mean, it was uh, crazy for us to fit up twenty five hundred or th three thousand spaceships, because you, as you re can remember, you had to do those one at a time. <laughs> back yes. then, we didn't we didn't have multi fit or anything, so we would have fitting parties the week before, and um, twelve or fifteen of us would get into a station and just hand each other modules and ships, and we'd do it one at a time. You know, fit a ship, put it in the hangar fit a ship, fit a banger. And there'd be 10 or 15 of us doing that for four or five hours at a time. And uh, yeah, that was just insane. But uh, it's a lot easier. It's it's in a way a lot easier now, but in a way it's a lot more difficult because we're doing we're not doing 2,000 or 3,000 ships. We're doing uh, a little over 10,000 this time. So, And we've done that for the last three years. So that, that takes about, honestly, for planning and everything, it takes really, it does take about six months to uh, plan it you know i gotta put a date in the say i gotta pick a date and then tell the industry people to get started so they've got to they go out and they mine all the resources and everything and they like to do it they like to do it that way instead of buying everything off the market which we you know which would be very expensive so they get a kick out of it, it gives them something to do um you know together as a corporation and um and we get uh, the ships out of it so about a week or a week and a half ago, they moved. They did a big move up, and they moved all the uh, the pieces and parts into Aletta. And then for the last couple of days, they've been doing multi fits on um, ten thousand plus uh, frigates and destroyers. And then uh, here in the next couple of days, um, I have to get on, and a few other people have to get on, so that we can. We have three state, three NPC stations in Aletta, and so all the ships are divided between those stations. And then we have to do a trade party where we, uh, we, uh, the directors get on, and then we trade ships between each other so we can get them into the corp hangars, so that all the corps in a band apart have ships in their hangars. So then on the day of the event, then all of us get on and and hang out in those three stations, and when anybody docks, we. Uh, we open a trade window with them and just hand them a bunch of spaceships, you know, usually three or four at a time. And 
and then we just do that for six hours <laughs> non nonstop. You know, it's it's a it's a bit of a frenzy, but it, it's awesome. Yeah, I was gonna ask. Um, you said it's up to ten thousand ships now. Are you guys done with all your ships by the end of those six hours? Yeah, yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, like for example, last year. Well, the the crazy story here is that a year, two years ago, we had a gentleman uh, donate the ships, and he spent the whole year making them. He he donated twenty thousand spaceships. And he moved those into uh, here's the here's the best part. <laughs> so he moved those into one station in Oletta in an NPC station, and then I had to and contracted them to me, and then I had to move them into the other two. And that mean that meant I had to fly a bowhead, which you know, be very quiet. Don't tell anybody that I did that because um, I'm not supposed to be doing that stuff. I had to I had to load them up three or four hundred at a time and fly a bowhead. So I'd wake up every morning. And I would uh, load three or four hundred, depending on the frigate, you know, and just max, and then undock in a bowhead, fly them over to the other NPC station, and and do that 17, 20 times in the morning for about four weeks. That's that's a lot of moving and a lot of shifts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So to, to answer your question, though, like la for example, last year we had a little over. I think it was 13,000 ships that we handed out us. And then the total destruction was somewhere around 27,000 ships. You know, people bring their own ships or, fl or fly in from other places or fleets come in or, you know, so there's a lot more destruction than just uh, answerable to us as far as handing out things. So it's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. I got you. And CCP yeah. is involved too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're helping promote. I just finished the billboard video, so that should be running up in game and then they're going to do some uh, promotion for us you know probably on the launcher and uh, in community note in uh, the community uh, beat and um so yeah they, they know it. and then uh, we spread the word too of course i write you know blog posts and use twitter and then show up on shows like this and talk about it but it's a it's a pretty unique event it's the largest player run event in all of e and every year you know ccp fozzy always does a an end of the day sort of recap for us um on total destruction and we end up you know breaking the records almost every year we came very close to breaking the record last year but the year before still maintains the largest low sec battle of all time and uh, i don't know it's like the fourth largest day or third largest day ever for ship destruction in the eve and you know just things like that so uh, not dollar amount but uh, a number of ships yeah, can't can't it's, rival it, Titans with frigates, right? Yeah, it's 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 hard to compete with the Titans, yeah. But that is interesting though that you know, Eve was always defined by these wars and these big you know, big sort of battles and politics and this and that. But then you have like you yourself over here like, nah, let's just all blow each other up because it's fun and people like to see explosions and it's all super low key. Like technically nobody loses anything because the ships are free from you, you and your group. Right. Right. But, yeah. 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 Yeah, and uh, you know the the really great part for me is that every, every all the time I you know I'm I'm communicating and talking to people at local you know every day and, and as you can imagine some of those conversations are not exactly repeatable, uh, but more more surprisingly though, uh, the majority um, are and I, I hear it from people all the time you know but my first taste of PvP and Eve was at the frigate free for all you know two years ago or. Six years ago, I, I participated and I couldn't believe I've never seen a fleet fight that big. You know, it's it's amazing that, um, you know, we we have it's frigates. And yet, you know, at certain times during that day, you'll literally see tie dye, you know, in low sec in a frigate fight. And, you know, depending on who <laughs> the, the other fun part about it is that every year I get to watch the community or new people. Uh, who experience or discovering the idea of it, try to figure out a way to exploit it. So it's the same conversations, you know, 15 years in a row now. So I've had, you know, people who say, oh man, I will bring a battleship loaded with smart bombs and I will just kill everybody. And I say, well, I've never heard, never heard that idea before. So <laughs> here's the, so here's the reality of that. You're you're probably going to kill three or four ships, and then everybody will figure out you have smart bombs, and they'll just orbit you at uh, 15, and you'll have about 300 brigades shooting you, and your battleship will last about, you know, 1.25 minutes before it explodes. So 
you know, have fun with that. Yeah, I know. I know people like to do that, especially the whole. It says like the title is free for all, but some people will bring fleets or they'll like oh, sure. fleet yeah. up and fun, and stuff like that. But I mean, I think at the end of the day, everybody has fun. We did have a question in chat about tie dye. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you want to talk about how um, do you guys get server node reinforcement by CCP in that or is yeah it, yeah, it okay? yeah as a matter of fact that reminds me I need to send that email to that or send out fill out the form but yeah they, they they reinforce our node for us every year and uh, it does help and and when we do get tie dye it's usually just very very slight like I think there was a moment last year where we had. 1200 people in local and it wasn't just the the amount of people but i think that was the moment that uh, a certain uh group decided to hot drop some redeemers and um some dreads with an apostle or two and if anybody's familiar with low sec you could probably easily figure out who that would be and um so that just all the coincidences of happening at the same time kind of went tie-dye with about 10 15 percent for a little while but it's never a problem. It never gets really bad. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's fun. You know, everybody, um, like I said, everybody, you know, thinks there's going to be a lot of easy kills and a lot of things. But it's quite, it turns out to be quite a different event when you're there. Um, when you undock and there's, you know, three or four hundred or five hundred or six hundred or a thousand frigates in space. Um, so it's kind of fun. When I first started doing these, you know, back in the day, we, I tried to come up with all kinds of rules, you know, no gate camping, no station camping. And then, and then for some of the events we would hire, like we, we hired NOR, you know, a mercenary group to come and, and keep the gates clear and, and provide security. You know, we would have, um, uh, one year the Go goon swarm did it for us. They came and you know provided security. And what, what I learned over the years is that really the it kind of self polices itself in other words you know you don't really need a lot of rules um i ask i ask people not to do smart bombing because the worst thing that could happen to somebody who's coming in from high sec and experiencing pvp for the first time is to get potted and then have to do that all over again so if they're coming from a mars space or somewhere and they get potted home you know there's 27 jumps back or 37 jumps back and that's just really not not fun for them and so why do that and 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 um, ECM burst. I mean, that's kind of just cheating, and um, you know, eating comp ships are kind of not great. Um, just because of how many, you know, one pilot can get on four kills or whatever. So we just try to limit that. And what hap what ends up happening, and this is the great part about it, is that those kinds of things get reported in local. So if you say in local, uh, there's somebody in Belt One One who is uh, smart bombing then, um, you know, half of local is going to fly to Belt 1-1 and, <laughs> and, and kind of take care of that problem for you. So it's part of the fun. Um, if there's a gate camp or a station camp, the same thing happens. You know, everybody just flies over there and, and starts shooting. So it, <laughs> it's kind of self-policing, which is part of the part of the joy and the, and the fun of it. Yeah, I think everybody also, I think a lot of people don't realize, like they say, hey, I'm going to bring a bigger ship. But it's like if you're in a frigate, it looks good if you get in on a bigger ship. Whereas, like, if you solo another frigate, that's also good. But that's kind of expected in a free-for-all. So right, I think exactly. a lot of people, like, underestimate people's drive to kill big things with the littlest ship they have. And they just they just try to capitalize on it, and then they suffer for it. And that's okay. It's part of the game. But <laughs> it, it, is, it is. And then, and then the other thing that I like to do is every year I, I usually pick one or two, like, really special ships. Um to undock myself and to give people an opportunity to fight something that they may never ever see in Eve, you know, and I, I can't fly a Titan or I'd do that. But I do like, I have a knock, knock Nagel Fars before and uh, marshals and, um, you know, tight uh, carriers. We have people who will do orcas, you know, an orca in a belt mining. Um, last year we put a fleet together of, uh, I think it was 14 or 15 uh, pro, how do you say it? Pro Raiders? Or no, um, the mining one, not the Hulks, the other ones. And um, they were, uh, so we went to a belt and pretended to be mining. And uh, that was awesome. I think we got like, you know, 45 or 50 kills. And I had, I had never flown a mining barge before. And um, so that was cool. I still have it. I keep it in the station. I'm never going to uh, knock it again because it, um, it has like 45 kill marks on it. So. 
Yeah. Um, Procure. So that's, that's the name. Procure. That's the one. Thank you. And um, yeah, so I mean, it's just stuff like that. You know, I haven't really decided yet this year what I'm going to do. Um, I got a little bit of <laughs> I got a little bit of trouble last year um, because of a donation. The, all those special ships that I just talked about, the Marshall, the Nagel Forest, all those are all donated. And um, because uh, we're poor pirates in low sec, we don't really have access to moon mining or anything. And um, snuff went and blew up all our structures, so we don't have those. And um, so I, um, uh, somebody contacted me before the FFA, and they said, um, I have a hell that I would like to donate. And I'm like, oh, that's great. Um, I have, I've never done that before, so that would be awesome. So uh, they said, would you, I'll contact it to you, and you can use it in the FFA. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. And this, this was like three months before, and I never really thought about it. I kind of mentioned it on Twitter. I think I said uh, somebody just donated a, an officer. It was officer fit, too, and I found <laughs> out when I accepted the contract. And I was like, somebody donated an officer fit hell, and uh, that's going to be, I'll fly at the FFA. It'll be great. Like three months go by, and I kind of forgot about it. One, because it was far away, and I had to move it. So I needed to coordinate some Sino chains, you know, and that's always a pain for us because we're not really, we don't do that. And then the second reason was, as I learned rather quickly, is that I don't have any super skills. I'm a low sec pirate. I don't fly supers. I have, you know, I can fly a dreadnought and a carrier maybe. I didn't have any skills to fly the darn thing. So as, as it got closer, I was like, well, you know, this is kind of silly. I'm not going to, I don't have time to train to fly it. I mean, I could, you know, level one it, I guess, and kind of, but that's kind of stupid. And so I just contacted the person and I said, um, you know, I appreciate this and everything. I mean, think about this for a second. Somebody donated for free a, what, 140 billion isk officer Pricey, fit hell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and um, everybody's telling me, Rick, you should just break it up into pieces and sell those on G Gita, right? I mean, I could probably make twice the amount of ISK from it. You know? And I'm like, no, no, somebody did this in uh, good spirit. And um, so I'm just going to give it back. So I did. I contacted them and I said, I'm just going to give this back to you uh, untouched uh, because I, I, I just can't move it and I can't fly it anyway. So and then that really upset some people who were looking forward to blowing me up at, a, at an officer fit hell, which I can understand. But um, the, you know, the, the, the negative side of that is sometimes, you know, people get carried away and they start kind of accusing you of things that you are not responsible for. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's, um, you mentioned this, like there's a lot of planning and stuff that goes into this. So, you know, it's not like, it's not like you're getting paid to do any of this. So managing it all and like trying to find and move things around, especially because that was going to be my initial question was how do you take, or how do you get the ships? It was like, do you take donations, things of that nature? But I know yeah. if you're like Mike Azariah for his school bus, he takes donations and a lot of his work is going around and getting it all sorted just because it's like everywhere. Sorry, my cat's entertained with the window. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, yeah, no, it's a, uh, uh, people do, uh, we get a lot of donations, and I think in the last like two months or so, we probably, I mean, I haven't added it all up yet, but we probably received you now four and a half, five billion is worth of ships. You know, people just give us like uh, three hundred frigates, or you know, here here in Azerbaijan is uh, four hundred and fifty Tristans, right? And or down in Almamaki, or you know, last year someone gave me a Zernitra, a dreadnought, and um, you know, what am I going to do with that? It's an Almamaki. Hmm that's pretty far from us. And so getting that coordinating all that does take time. And, and honestly, um, sometimes it, it happens right away. And then sometimes it might take two years to get down and get some of these. So it just depends. They're all, they're all taken care of. They're all, we don't exploit any of that. Um, you know, and, um, they all eventually will end up in the FFA. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, I think actually now we're all caught up. Uh, I think I put all those on contract to our, uh, and we're and we're all caught up. I believe all the donated assets are in the letter right now. So I think uh, as of the, I'm talking to you right now, I think everything, every single thing that's been donated to us, even in like a year or so ago, has all been accounted for at this point. Nice. I might I might be missing one Tristan or something, but um, I think it's all been accounted for. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. I was I was going to ask, because so, this is Rob in chat, was when exactly is the free-for-all? We know it's on 420 in April, so later this month, but what time? And I guess location, too. Maybe a lot of people don't know the location. 
Yeah, sure. Well, our, our home system is in Oletta, um, which is uh, next door to HiSec. So that makes it pretty convenient. Uh, the HiSec entrance is Jafet, J-U-F-F-I-T-I-V-E. And Uleta is uh, going to be uh, a friendly space for you that day. It's a uh, low sec, so um, we can all engage in PVP without taking too many uh, hits to the uh, sex status. Uh, as long as you don't pod anyone, your sex status shouldn't be too bad. If, especially if you really want to watch your sex status, you can leave your um, your thing on green and only shoot people who shoot you. And um, that will give you um, a little bit of a, a huge break on uh, sex status hits if you're concerned about that sort of thing. But again, that's not as concerning as it used to be because now we can uh, we can just buy our way out of sex status. So um, if you're into into that thing, so it is Saturday, uh, April twentieth, and it runs from sixteen hundred to twenty two hundred uh, Eve time. So six full six straight hours of insanity and mayhem. Uh, a couple of pieces of advice if you're coming for the first time or you're uh, coming is um, when you do arrive, dock in an NPC station, there are three of them, and we'll be giving ships out from all three. And if you set your medical clone when you arrive, that way if you do accidentally get potted, you will appear in the letter and just you know be able to start over again. You won't have to go home or come back. That's a pretty big one. We're also going to scatter about 40 mobile depots around in space. So uh, you can use those as, we'll put them on Insta docks or Insta un undocks. Um, so want to make sure mobile depots are on your overview. So you can use those as uh, helpful warp twos and warp froms and all that. And, um, and try to keep the undocks as clear as possible. Um, so that will be good so that you can get off the station without getting blapped, you know, by station campers. And what was the other one piece of advice? Um, so I already mentioned about the burst. Oh yeah, if um, well, I just mentioned that I, you know, I throw away a Nagelfar or a carrier or something, you know, special or martial or whatever. And I haven't really decided what that's going to be yet this year. But if you are interested in doing it, we do have, uh, like right now, I think there's six or seven non-alliance people who are going to be bringing something special uh, to fight with and to. Uh, to share with the community. So if you do want to do something like that, you're more than welcome. Uh, you can contact me or DM me on Discord or uh, on Twitter or somewhere, and we can work it out. Um, I used to build a schedule, and I uh, don't really do that anymore. I leave it up to everybody to decide on their own when they want to. It's not a big deal. We have six hours, so um, you know, any time is fine. And even if you don't want to tell me, and if you just want to light a sino and drop a dread in the middle of uh, this insanity, you feel free. That's that, too. Um, it's pretty much, it's pretty much, you know, the best way to run this, as I've discovered over the years, is the least amount of hands-on as possible. The more I, the more I try to crack down on people or, or build security fleets or try to, it just gets in the way. So just let everybody be E, let everyone, just let it be E and let it take care of itself. You know, it sort of has a way of sorting itself out. And that, that tends to be the most fun when unexpected and unplanned things happen. Um, as you know, I mean, you just don't see it coming and, um, you know, we, we had a, a couple of years ago, a group, um, and I don't remember who, oh, revolution revolution showed up in three redeemers and, a a couple of uh, dreadnoughts and they ended up losing all of those. So that was kind of fun. Yeah. Nice. Keeps it entertaining. They get a good mm -hmm. kill as well while feeding. Yeah. And then players who, uh, you know, maybe PVP isn't your thing, and maybe you're a miner in high sec, or you do industry or station trading, and you've always wondered, you know, like, what would it be like to be in a large fleet fight, and how am I ever going to experience that? Well, here's your chance. You know, just throw your throw the throw caution to the wind for, for six hours, or just, you know, 30 minutes or 45 minutes, and come down to the letter, grab a free ship or two, or four, or five, or ten, or however many you want, and... Uh, and get out there and and see what it's like, you know. And you'd be surprised. You might uh, you might enjoy it more than you think you will. And exactly. Like last yeah. year, the the people that I uh, like uh, brought with me uh, from my alliance that never done uh, like uh, PvP. Some of them, well, from this event are now like uh, mostly PvP or now, and like uh, they don't, they're they're not a lot interested in what they were doing before that point. So it's yeah, that's really, a, that's awesome. really a great event just to 
see and understand experience like the thrills the shakes uh, of uh, uh, your first pvp battles so yeah like awesome event yeah that's great i love hearing stories like that you know the, the thing about eve is and, and rain knows and you know because we've been involved in this for so many years now you can real easily get lost in the idea of all the things that go on you know the the complexity of it the community side of it the you know the 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 egos the posturing and all these things but where it really boils down to it it, it really should be as much as you can to be experienced as a video game right and have fun and, and there's moments like these things that come up every so often that you just have to allow yourself to let go of all those other problems and issues that you might think you have and just go have some fun for once you know and enjoy things and that that was really sort of the inspiration behind the creation of these things and uh, why we keep doing them yeah just yeah. go pew pew mm -hmm. just go pew pew let's just go pew pew each other in the face and have a laugh and uh, tease each other in local and, um you know <laughs> you know and, and it's the other thing is too i get, I get um uh, it's a funny thing that happened a few months ago I was having an argument with a couple of people about kill boards and whether they should exist or not and i said you know um if you if you care about your kill board you know, this is probably not the place to come because you know i i will probably be killed i don't know 45 or 50 60 times in six hours you know i think last year i was killed 65 times in in two hours and it's awesome and i love it and if i cared about my kill board at all i wouldn't run this event so but if you if you want to have fun and, and just uh, it's insane, so you know, come join us for uh, on Saturday. It's going to be awesome, and yeah. uh, and also also you get a chance to shoot a CCP dev. You know, that's pretty cool too. That's the, nice to have to on your kill board. Yeah, there was a question in chat about CCP streaming it or TIS streaming it, or do you are you yourself, Rick? So you're going to stream it, or is it open for anyone to stream? Uh, anybody can come and stream. Uh, we are. Uh, uh, I think Rushlock is going to be streaming. Uh, what's the Lo Lotrimer is going to be streaming? Um, or whatever his, I can't remember his name right now. I don't have it in front of me. But um, and CCP, I don't know if they're. I don't think they're going to be streaming it. I don't know. Sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. So I don't. I haven't heard. Um, I know Convict is coming, so he might do it. Uh, I don't think so. I so. Hope I don't think it's planned, you know. No, like there's, I think there's schedule uh, issue with. Other oh, people. you know what? I, you know why? It's because of Anger Games. Yeah. Yeah, Anger Games may end, and then they maybe they'll switch over to Convict too, so that mm -hmm. could always be an option. Right. Right. Yeah. Or like I know, they'll so... raid another one free for all streamer. Yeah. 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 yeah I think that's what happened last year, as a matter of fact, or the year before. But um, yeah. So everybody, anybody's free to stream it if they would like. Yeah, the more the merrier. So nice. I know I streamed yeah, it one year, and that was actually a lot of fun. Uh, people, I think oh, people right. kept trying to like snipe me and stuff too. But <laughs> yeah, I was say yeah. I won't be around. But Ben, if you are oh. around, or maybe we could talk to Ken, talk Kenneth into streaming because Kenneth loves streaming yeah, stuff well, like this. I'll be in the same place as you'll be. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> most <the> French probably. stuff. <laughs> no, no. Finally, it's not going to be French stuff. Like I've been recruited to do referee too. Oh, nice. That's yeah. awesome. 20. Wet my whistle there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're about halfway through the show. We've talked a lot about the free for all. Everybody in chat knows it is Saturday, April twentieth, sixteen hundred Uletta, um, spelled French. Uh, and then you don't have to technically don't have to bring anything but yourself, and hopefully you don't get potted. But Rix, you are on. I kind of hinted at this, I think, at the beginning of the show or behind the scenes. But you're on a multitude of projects here with Eve. We've we're talking about the free for all for thirty minutes, but we haven't even touched on your art or your history but with art within Eve. Do we want to dive into your involvement with the new Eve board game? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, as um, well when I started when I started playing Eve back in two thousand and eight, uh, just a month after it came out on Macintosh, which was uh, you know at the time I was just that was the only game I the only system I was using, and um, as a, at the time I was running a um, uh, advertising agency or creative agency that I had started in 2001. So my playtime was very limited and, uh, you know, I was kind of distracted for the first years, mostly playing with my kids. 
you know, and uh, as a matter of fact, my son is the one that got me involved in Eve in the first place, and he still he still plays today, he's still in State Frosty as well. And he just ran it. We just he just ran a fleet on Wednesday, and uh, because he's not a kid anymore, he's all grown up, sadly. But um, but as I, as time went on, you know, I I um, started doing like just for fun. I started doing blog banners for for people, and then um, YouTube banners, and then. Um, one of the alliances I was in in Providence back in 2009, they had just formed and um, uh, CCP had opened up the idea of people doing their own alliance logos and the um, alliance executor asked, which is a, a funny story because that alliance executor from almost 20 years ago owns an advertising agency in Minnesota and I still do work for him. He doesn't play Eve anymore, but so that 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 this is another example of how com uh, connections inside of Eve turn into real life connections, and uh, so I did. I designed the logo for the alliance, and that was the first one that I did. And I was like, "Hey, uh, CCP, is it okay if I do these?" And people pay me an ISK, and uh, CCP said, "Sure, yeah, ISK in game. It doesn't matter what you know. If you want to give you ISK, they can." So that was uh, probably about twenty four hundred alliance logos ago. And um, so doing doing art and stuff for Eve is just a, sort of an evolutionary process. I, over time, I just started like, fooling around with it and doing it as a hobby. And then uh, in 2014, uh, then CCP Spitfire and, um, and Torfi and a couple of people called and we started talking about redoing the Eve store. The Eve store had been down for about a year or so. So we started that process and then uh, the CCP bought like eight of my posters and sold them through a company out in California. And then, you know, one thing leads to another. And then I, I'm doing a uh, CCP, a London office openings and the community beat branding and, you know, just pro side projects for CCP for, you know, like real ones, you know, and, uh, and then, um, Oh man, I started thinking about because I had back in the '90s I had worked for Fleer Marvel Entertainment and done uh, trading cards and stuff, and I designed this uh, card game called Marvel Overpower back in the '90s for Fleer. And so I started thinking, uh, hey, an Eve card game sounds pretty cool. And then I realized that they had they had made one themselves way back in 2004 or five. And I was like, well, maybe it's time to do another one of those. So every time I would try to do that, I'd get a cease and desist letter. <laughs> so I had, uh, I talked to Andrew Groen about um, uh, working on an Alliance tournament card game, you know, where you'd pick, you basically take the Alliance tournament rules and turn it into a card game. So basically you have a hundred points, you'd, 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 uh, you'd build your own deck, or like sort of like Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, you'd have 10 cards. 10 ships and then your friends would have 10 ships and then you'd you know have action cards and dice and things like that it would determine you know, it's basically like a e version of Yu-Gi-Oh or, or Pokemon and I which I still think is a great idea you know 10-15 uh, minute battles in uh, you know sitting at a bar or something uh, you know when we're at Fan Fest or, in, or at an Eve meet would be a lot of fun anyway so those those never went anywhere because the CCP was never interested in doing anything with that what I didn't know over the last couple of years is that there was a group out in Poland who was annoying CCP as well about putting a board game together. And CCP would say, no, we don't want to do that. We're not doing any more board games. We're not doing any more card games. And then they just didn't give up. And uh, eventually CCP said, uh, well, you know, based on what you guys are doing, um, we think that we would like to do that. And um, the first thing uh, these, these guys did was uh, Google you know, Eve artist and <laughs> Eve, you know, uh, community people. And they started learning about it. And, um, and they they have three players. It's a company in uh, Poland called Titan Forge. And they actually have three Eve players on board. Nice. And um, so I get this DM from somebody in Poland who says, uh, hey, CCP has agreed to, we want to do a board game on Eve. And CCP has agreed. And I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. Um, yeah, I want to be involved, please. And that was last February. And um, since then, I've been working on it nonstop. As a matter of fact, I'm still, I am still working on it, even though the Kickstarter has uh, been a huge success. And um, we, we uh, premiered the prototypes at FanFest last year. And uh, they kind of made a mistake, and which turned out to be a great thing. Um, 
the game itself is regular sized, you know, and for the conventions that they were going to, FanFest included, they, they decided to create a 200% version. So it would be like a display version. It would have to be out front. And I said to, I said to Rad, I said, you know, if you, when I got there, I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. You know, and I said, this is probably a really bad mistake. He's like, what do you mean? I said, because everybody's going to want this, you know, they're, they're going to want the big, the biggest miniatures they can get, the biggest board they can get. And then sure enough, over the three days of FanFest, everybody who walked up there went, well, oh, can I buy this, this one? You know? And um, when we did the Kickstarter, they did, um, they did a 200% giant version of the, the box, which is already gargantuan. It's going to be you know, like three and a half feet by three and a half feet. <laughs> and, and the 200% version is going to be incredible. So that's been a, it's been quite a, quite a, an amazing thing to, um, to have happen is to be, um, you know, working, I mean, literally working full time on Eve for the last year, a little over a year now. So, and I think probably another, you know, probably half a year or so. Um, I don't even know. We, the last time I counted, I think 375 or 425 cards, uh, packages. I just did a new package this week for, um, the faction warfare, uh, pirate ship box. And I mean, it was just, I'm working on tiles. I'm working on graphics and logos and, and uh, icons and things. So it's just no, pretty awesome. That's it's amazing. Hard, hard, it's hard to believe it's true, you know? It isn't. It is. I also, I, I was wondering where you were going when you taught, were started talking about the card game and the cease and desist. And I was like, I did not realize, like, that's how they found you. I thought, I didn't know, like, if CCP referred you or what, but that's awesome. That Yeah, they, you know, they CC- found me through Google, you know? It's funny. But yeah, the fact that CCP, well, I know CCP has to protect their IP. I don't know if you guys oh, know. Of course. This. Oh, absolutely. There's there's tons of like scam games and apps out there for like the mobile stuff. But the fact that they realize like, hey, these people aren't trying, like Ricks, you're obviously not trying to steal the work. This Polish board game company, not trying to steal the work. Like, no, these people are just passionate and they want to see more of Eve. We should empower them to do that. And that's just amazing that you guys are able to partner and, you know, come out with something. Well, as you know, too, you, you can't treat, you can't uh, think of CCP as a monolithic company that's existed for 23 years they're, because they're not. Every so often, uh, the, the, the staff changes, new people come in, new people, old people leave. You know, there, there is a, there's cycles to it, you know, and the, the company that was in 2014, like all the people that I worked with on relaunching the store, every single one of them are gone. You know, Torfies at Microsoft, CCP uh, Spitfires at, at Microsoft. Uh, there are two different things that they're doing. Torfies on Minecraft and and Spitfires. I can't remember what he does at Microsoft, but uh, you know, Falcon's gone. All the uh, you know, everybody there is as it's all new people. And as new people come in, they have new attitudes and new ways of thinking about things. But also, but also to be fair, the world has changed too. You know, and. Um, the way the way social media works and the way everything is and the communities of being involved is not as weird of an idea as it probably was in 2003 you know i mean it's 20 years ago a lot of things have changed you know um the idea of a company sort of being isolated in iceland and having to protect its ip and be concerned about trademark theft and rock is a little bit antiquated now you know it's a little more more companies are open to the idea of working with their fan base and uh, especially those who are talented in certain ways. Yeah. And the, yeah. And the other, the other side of it is that all of those cease and desist were for a reason. They were, they were me trying to build a bridge um, to CCP because back in, like back in the early, early days, we had no way of doing that. There wasn't no discord, Eve discord to, you know, I couldn't uh, ping a CCP dev or, or pick up the phone and, you know, like there wasn't uh, this kind of thing. Like we could zoom call, you know, and I remember um, I was on vacation in, um, in the Southern United States and uh, I had a zoom call. It was like one of the first zoom calls I ever had with, um, with those guys back in the, in uh, 2013 or so talking about this stuff, you know, and, um, but the one thing that all those cease and desist did not just to build uh, the relationship that ended with the board game was also to open up Eve IP for creative people. And um, I sort of 
pioneered that and, and, and convinced them that it was okay to do it. And, um, you know, there's three or four of us artists now who are officially, officially able to create art and, um, and sell it, you know, for, um, for Eve, for Eve online, it went in conjunction with CCP and that's pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, you, you're completely right. The whole paving the way. So like, I think for the longest time, like you talked about the miniatures, Eve players could not get a freaking ship model for the life of them. Now we have 3d printers. I don't know if you can see this. This is a scimitar that somebody created and painted for me. Yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, that would not have been possible. Yeah. Yeah. But CCP has oh. never done it on their own. And so it's like, you have to leverage these players and the community to be able to do that. And that's what a lot right. of players have been doing. One of the, one of the worst moments that I've had in Eve, uh, every, every, uh, so every fan fest, there is a meeting that gets on the, on the schedule. It's called, um, you know, Eve creative community meets with devs to talk about what can be done or something, you know, I can't remember the title, but they have it every year, every fan fest, they have this. And, every fan fest it was the same meeting we would sit there at the table and orca would be there or whoever was in charge of it at the time and and we would uh people around the table would go hey i make 3d printed spaceships how can i get a license to do that and sell them and, and provide spaceships to the community and they'd be like well we'll look into it we'll we'll talk about it and something <laughs> will come up and then and then somebody else would say well i do watercolor paintings and how can i do that and somebody would say well i do tapestries and look at this giant a quilt that I made with Rix's artwork on it. How can I? And they'd say, "Well, we think of every year it was the same. We'll take that into consideration. We'll think about it." You know. And then um, one year, it was a, this is when we were still at Harpa. I went into that meeting and I sat there and I said, "This time I'm just not going to. I'm not going to sit still for this." I, you know. And they, they started again, and it was the same thing. It was a this and that. And they're like, "Well, we'll think." And I and I hit my hand on the table and I said, "You know what?" I'm tired of listening to this every year. This is ridiculous. You know, we, we've got to do something about this. These people are genuine, passionate, caring, caring fans who just want the opportunity to do something that will probably fail, but let them let, you know, that was the thing I heard from a certain crowd early on in the, in the early years was that we don't want to put our fans in a position to fail. And I said, look, failure is success in the business world. You learn from your failures and you get better at doing them. Empower your fans to fail. Give them a chance to to fail, to fuck up, you know, to, to mess up. They want to. That's kind of one of the core principle of Eve. Yeah, fail. for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if, even if you lose, you can still learn something. It's you 100% learn something accurate. valuable. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what uh, business is all about. Uh, in my own take, after... Uh, uh, Lloyd and uh, Lucas and a few other people got a license. I was still working as a consultant, and I didn't really care to do it. But then, um, last fan, or two fan fest ago, I went up to um, Anna, who's awesome. She's the brand manager now, and she's an amazing person to work with. And um, I said it's time for me to do it too. She went, okay, yeah, we're all about that. So that's when I opened RexJavix.com, and I've been doing that. And I even, uh, as long as I've been doing this stuff and as much as I planned ahead for it, I messed up in how I put the strings together. Like, I've got like a little bit of a complicated thing because I made a promise to myself when CCP sold my stuff out of California with uh, people in Australia and China and I mean Russia and um, other places had to pay like four times as much as the posters yeah. cost to get them shipped. And I promised myself, if ever I get a chance to do this, I'm going to figure out a way to make shipping as low as possible. I mean, there's only so much you can do. So when I put my store together, I, it's like three or four different providers all mixed together. And the the great thing is that the posters are printed from 37 different locations around the planet. And they print them from the one that's closest to the person who ordered it. So uh, a lot of VAT taxes and things, uh, customs problems and stuff that happens if it's coming from North America don't, don't apply because, uh, and the shipping is as reasonable as it can be. And uh, but unfortunately, though, even I messed up and I, I created a system in which it was not working for me, and it caused me a, a little bit of headache. So I had to shut the store down for about a month and fix that. It was just technical. It wasn't anything that I've done. Uh, it just messed up my, it was basically uh, compiling in my credit card in a way that wasn't sustainable. Let's just put it that way. So yeah. I had to, I just paid off the credit cards and then started over and put the system back in a different way. And, um, and it's running fine now. Uh, but that's, you know, those are, 
these things do not happen overnight. Uh, they take years to, uh, to put together and to arrange and do things, but it's worth it. You know, yeah. It has been worth it. And CCP, like you talk about the shipping stuff, like the Eve store where it's like, ah, a $15 mug with a ship on it, like super reasonable. But then it's like, oh, $50 to ship to the UK. Like not even, it's not like somebody living out in like Siberia or Antarctica. It's like a very reasonable location. And I, I remember how pissed the players were. And every time, like, I, I was posting on Twitter, like, let me know what next event you'll go to. I will buy it and hold it and then, you know, give you it for the money or whatever, right? Because, like, that's what EVE players are having to do was to have their friends in America buy it. Because I think you were right. It was out of California. But then yep. bring it overseas or wait till a fan fest or, like, an EVE London or something of that nature for players to actually buy it. And that was insane. And I hope, I really, really hope, because I feel like T-shirts, like, EVE players designing T-shirts is such a huge market players do it now for context players do it now with their own logos their own jokes or whatever but like getting the ships or like the the race logos and being able to sell those on a t-shirt would be amazing because right yeah. now you can't right now it's like oh you have to buy whatever's in the store or you commit like ip infringement or whatever to print something yeah and sell it. yeah i still i get people who ask me um just this week as a matter of fact on uh, the uh, creative community on discord Somebody was like, "Hey, I love these, um, uh, you know, the pirate, the new pirate stuff that's on Gates." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, other guys, they were like, "Oh, those were really cool. CCP did a great job. I would like to uh, put those on T-shirts and sell them." And I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! You know, you can't do that. It's IP, and you know." And the sad part is, there's just uh, there's hundreds of you know uh, illegal sites up on the internet. You can find them if you really look for them, but they're illegal and they take them down. They only last for a couple of months and then they get taken down and uh, burned. But um, yeah, it's um, more, you know, more of it. Um, but, you know, it's one piece at a time, you know. Yeah. If you can get CCP to sell, not sell, but to give people rights to sell t-shirts, like that would just be amazing in my mind. Yeah, my idea originally was to turn the, and I still think this is the viable option, is to turn the Eve store into a community run thing and um, and not partner with a that would uh, company. Be amazing. In, yeah, not partner with a company in California to, you know, hire a, um, a community member who is uh, really well versed in Eve merchandise and who's passionate about the game and who uh, who might want to um, you know have something like that to take care. Of. And I'm not suggesting anybody in particular, but there might be a one or two people out there who would like to do it. and then uh, have the community uh suggest and provide designs and, and products and things that they would like to see and then partner with third-party providers because now unlike 20 years ago there's a whole globe full of third-party providers who will print on demand and print on demand stuff has gotten way back in 2013 when i mentioned third-party print on demand the creative director at Eve at the time said, we do not want anything to do with sweatshops in Asia. And that was the, that was the opinion of people that this stuff was getting printed and produced by the sweatshops, you know, and that's not true. I mean, I'm sure there are sweatshops on print on the band thing, but you know, I don't, I don't use the. Uh, yeah. I think print on a, demand is all super yeah. simple. Yeah, and it's so hard for CCP, and I get it. You know, they got burned once. They they produced a lot of stuff, and they had a warehouse full of it, and they had a hard time getting rid of it. And they, you know, it took them years to get rid of all that. And you know, printing up a bunch of T-shirts and then having figuring out how many people are going to want them is very very difficult. And so that's why print on demand works so great. You know. Yeah. I've ordered a few yeah. for, uh, from you uh, last week where, when I didn't get the those yeah. that I wanted uh, out of the Eve Montreal, like my own event. <laughs> so, so like yeah. I'm, I'll be yeah. receiving them uh, probably this week. So it's really awesome. That's awesome. And yeah. uh, what what I like uh, like on your uh, website is that you can get them like as poster, as frame or metal. So like it's and. What you see on the website, like you see, like it's good quality, but it's so much better in real. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. Um, my whole house is. My wife, you know, calls it an Eve museum because it's. Uh, and my whole house is decorated in Eve stuff, so it's good to see. Him. 
Oh, really? So, like, do you think that people that would go to the Steel City event uh, would have a look at it? Yeah, yeah, they can. They can come right in here in this room and uh, stand here and see my my workstation and see all the the insanity that goes on at my house. Yeah, we've been. Well, I, I don't remember what number this is, but we've been doing this a few years. We had to stop, obviously, because of COVID. Um, and last summer, we did we did skip a year there because uh, um, two of my boys are uh, started college that summer. But uh, we're doing it again this year. And it's held at our home. It's just our house, and people come from all over, and we hang out for a day or a day and a half and uh, drink, talk about Eve, and catch up with each other. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Nice. It's pretty cool. Yeah, we we decided. You know, I got um, I got do years ago. I got doxxed on Reddit twice, and uh, from uh, some little misunderstandings with former goon people, and um, uh, who are no longer in the game, uh, surprisingly. And uh, but they uh, they did they they dumped all my personal information on Reddit and uh, from a court filing, and that was awesome. So after that, it was like, hey, you know, uh, everybody knows who I am and can find me. So why not just completely? forget about the idea of having any kind of public uh, uh, secrecy about it. And so let's just have people to our house. <laughs> so um, it started, uh, my wife did it on my birthday the first year. It was sort of a birthday party idea too. And uh, we just had it in, um, you know, uh, people from Germany. Uh, we've had players from Germany travel here last uh, last time. Anna and, and, uh, Tor and uh, her I husband came them. from Germany. Don't they? So they're the best. They're the, they're the best. best. They are. They're awesome. And they, they were so happy and um, they hung out, they stayed the extra day and we took them on tour of the city and, you know, did, took them to dinner and stuff. And they're just, they're just the nicest people. And a gray gal dr uh, drove and took the train all the way from Oregon, you know, and showed up. And uh, so we, we had, uh, that was awesome. We got to uh, spend a week and a half worried to death about uh, this ancient old lady traveling across the country by herself, uh, which was just, she, she is just this the most special person and uh you know we had we had motorcycle guys drive up from texas on motorcycles one year and uh people from you know, uh random mcnally's coming down from minnesota and he's gonna bring uh, barbecued bacon and um and whiskey and you know it's just it's just very casual and um there's no we don't have any uh, you know presentations or anything like that because you know we're just here uh, we eat we make food we eat we drink you know we just have a good time hanging out in the sun all day that's awesome. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So, it, like, uh, let's say people that come from uh, like elsewhere, like you said, that they they can hang out like uh, for let's say a few days. If they arrive like uh, on the, the Friday or something, then you can leave like yeah. We usually we usually have a, a quick get together the Friday before the Friday night. So we'll sit outside and, and um, you know everybody gets a chance to catch up real quick, and then uh, the event itself is the is the whole day the next day. You know, usually from like 10 o'clock in the morning, you know, give everybody a chance to get themselves up and get some breakfast. And then uh, people will start wandering in around 10. And then we just go until uh, till we can't go any longer, you know, till 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and then pass out. And then we'll have, we'll have, you know, some people are here the whole time. And then um, uh, especially people with families, uh, with kids and stuff will show up for an hour or two. And then, uh, you know, we, we uh, I usually barbecue for everybody or make hamburgers and hot dogs or whatever the food is going to be on the grill. And I, it's Rick's cooking for everyone, which that's pretty fun. And I haven't poisoned anybody yet. So that's nice. Nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. I feel like this, that would be a very Eve thing to do, but also like, this is a, really mean. Yeah. Uh, but it's not as, it's not as Eve as like conspiring for like a big war in Eve. So, you know, it's oh, okay. playing at the barbecue. That's that's the yeah. I, I can neither confirm nor deny that war plans are made during this event, but they may or may not be. Yeah. Heck yeah. I thought that you were some, like some... going to uh, refer like uh, la like uh, last week uh, comment that I've made rain about uh, like the R laser tag and uh, getting like yeah uh... the kid laser tag. Shooting <laughs> yeah. kids poison with lasers anyone, is not but... great. But, yeah, Ben's out here ruining laser tag birthday yeah, parties. Yeah, yeah, he's shooting kids with lasers. Is what I heard. <laughs> What's fun? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, why don't we have laser tag at FanFest? That would be great. Like around Reykjavik at night, you know, can you imagine? That would be pretty awesome. That would be amazing. It would be. 
Yeah, like roving gangs of pirates and uh, and nullseckers running around uh, Old Town Reykjavik around Harpa, shooting each other with lasers. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, like I should, just, I, I'm gonna have to write this down and mention it to. Um, yeah, people of e Vanguard should uh, like do something with that. Yeah, it's perfect oh, for Vanguard. Instead oh, of you could like great. What a great idea. make fake models of the Vanguard guns and like put the like actual like laser guns in there. I think we just invented something really new for <laughs> for FanFest. Yeah. FanFest 25 is going to be lit. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, with lasers. Yeah. Oh, that, that would be I fun. I love this idea. Go, go back <laughs> to ARPA and like uh, just uh, like uh, make it all up so that uh, people can have places to snipe. Oh, ARPA, and... ARPA is such a great place for that, too. It's cavernous, you know, and it just goes Layers. on forever. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think we're on on either on something or on to something. So nice, but that's not all. You, like uh, you've been doing, like you talked about it a little uh -oh. bit earlier, uh, like a, a blog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I I just caught you're you're absolutely hysterical, uh, Ben, and I I love you so much. Um, <laughs> you just make me. <laughs> I just, I know English is not your primary language, but it's just oh, awesome. Sorry, um, I'll re listen to, uh, to myself like after that. <laughs> no, I, 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 Rain, I don't know if you've had an opportunity to be on with uh, with him and Dame and um, and talk. It's just, I, it just cracks me up. I end up laughing the whole time that they interview me. Um, yeah, I yeah, haven't, I but I get to have him every Sunday, so I get. What yeah, you're that's, that's true. That's true. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, by the way, oh, I do have a, yeah, since 2010, I've been writing uh, Eva Ganda uh, for, oh, God, for over 14 years now, yeah. Um, so, uh, again, way back in the day, I, I, you know, Eva was a hobby. I didn't take it very seriously. It was just a video game. I played other video games, and, but it was the first MMO, and it starts to seep into your system, you know, and you start to, you know, hey, what what the heck is going on, and and then you realize you're having adventures and you're doing things and you're being involved in wars. I was in like wars right from the beginning. I went down to Providence two weeks after I started playing Eve and, and got into a war right away and learned a lot from um, a lot of great you know, pro God legend and like all these people who went on to become. I mean, I ran into I uh, ran into the Matani and the, the Goon Swarm uh, Rifter fleets of two hundred Rifters coming into system and all. These, craziness and it was like well there's stories to be told here and blogging was something i did for the agency and for some of our clients and uh, it was this seemed a natural thing to like hey i should record all of these adventures that i'm having and, um, and so 2010 I, in january 2010 i started doing that every morning i'd wake up and have my cup of coffee and i would write a hey what happened in the eve the other day you know kind of and then you know being a creative person i can't just write about what happened in the Eve the other day. Then it, then it was, well, okay, I got to make up some kind of a parody or a, a funny story or some memes and graphics. And and then it was logos. And then it was people's blog headers and the YouTube channel headers. And then it was videos about, you know, goofy stuff. And, you know, then, um, you know, making fun of myself. You know, I, I back in the early days, I did a lot of like uh, Rick's is a wanker kind of. I mean, I actually did a video called Rick's is a wanker, and uh, when a ship was making fun of me, and you know, I think Rain, I did, uh, I did some promo things for Rain. Yeah, yeah, um, you just lost stuff for me. Yeah, yeah, made made her head head dance on a, on other people's bodies and things. It was pretty fun. Uh, we did a lot of weird stuff uh, back in the day, and still do. You know, and then. Sindel, uh, uh, I had, um, my kids showed me this video from Australia. It was a PSA video about all the dumb ways to die. And I can't remember, it was for their authority, um, transit authority. You know, don't don't step in the train, you know, don't don't jump on the tracks, things like that. But it was done in a, in a cartoony style. And I thought, oh, gosh, this is great for E. And I, so I wrote some quick lyrics and I contacted Sindel. And she recorded this song called Eve, Dumb Ways to Die. And I made a video of it. And, you know, it's had over a million and a half views so far. It's like, like 10 years old now. And I still get people who comment on the video, like, what are these? What What's going on here? <laughs> totally confused people watching this video. Um, yeah, so you know, I've been doing that. And it's just kind of been um, kind of like the focal point um, 
soapbox, place to complain, a uh, place to tell CCP they're not doing a very good job about certain things or that they are doing a good job about certain things. And then, you know, to promote events and sell artwork and just my place to rant and, um, and express how, my frustrations and, uh, you know, complaints or f having fun or, you know, just whatever I feel like that morning, basically. I mean, I, I don't do it as often as I did. I, Back in uh, back when I started, there was another blogger uh, called Ripard Tag in uh, Jester, and he was posting like all the time. So we were kind of in a contest against each other, like how often we could post. So I was posting every day, and uh, that, every day that I played Eve, I would write a blog post. That was my promise, and I that that got a little silly after a while because yeah, um, can't keep that up, not with any kind of quality. Uh, now I just do it when I feel like it or when something's uh, tickling my, you know, funny bone or uh, needs to be talked about. But yeah, thanks for the promo. I, I always forget about Eve again because it's been there for so long. I always forget that's something that I still do. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you're also getting involved with uh, like another uh, project with the NPSI fleet. Can you tell us about Yeah, this, uh, this, yeah, sure. Um, Uh, April is um, a, a Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and um, there's quite a few organizations. Oh, there you go. And uh, April 24th is is what's called Denim Day. People wear denim uh, jackets, denim pants, you know, whatever, and uh, or a piece of denim or a button or something to uh, show their support for victims of sexual assault. And uh, there's an uh, Eve player who contacted me. He's never put on an event before. He didn't know how to do it. But uh, he's in the military, and he takes care of these programs for um, uh, submarines in the military. And um, he's also an Eve player, like I said. And he, he contacted me because of the uh, frigate free-for-all. He's like, would you be willing to help me you know, create an identity for this? So I did a logo for him and, and get me in touch with CCP, and I'd like to put on an NPSI fleet. Uh, for Denim Day. And I said, well, I could do you even one better. I said, I know you've never done this before, so why don't you just let me take care of it for you? So I contacted Kiate at Fun Inc. And they're they're on board. CCP's on board. I've talked to uh, CCP Swift about this. And so we're going to do some, you know, cross promotion and get this put together. The pieces have not yet coalesced into a, hey, I can share when and where and all Uh, within the next week or so, it'll be. I'll pro. I'll I'll write a blog post about it, and we'll promote it. CCP will promote it, it uh, on on Monday, April 20th, I think it's a Monday, April twenty fourth. There will be a public NPSI fleet uh, uh, in support of awareness for sexual assault. So I think that's pretty awesome. I would like to see more of that kind of thing going on in Eve. You know, the outside world seeping into our crazy little science fiction universe yeah. and i know it's not the, i know it's not the first one and i'm not trying to claim that or anything i just like to, to see more of it that's all yeah it would yeah, be fun to sure. have like a apparel like a denim of apparel that, the apparel that you can buy that would go to the donate section that'd be really neat no, too or that skin. would be really neat yeah yeah some kind of yeah when are we getting to make our own skins maybe we could do that too june you know? <laughs> yeah yeah that's what they say we'll see Most Or likely. Go. Nice. Anyway, but yeah, thanks, guys. I didn't appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. So I know we're at the top of the hour wrapping it up. Do you have anything else you wanted to add? Maybe something you wanted to touch on that we didn't call out? Uh, no, I think uh, I think uh, you guys did a good job of running down the things. I'm, you know, just uh, this is a great community, and thanks for having me on and for talking about these things out loud and. And, you know, I think uh, the one of the things that I've noticed the most about the last 20 years of being in the Eve community is just how much more positive and, and supportive it's gotten over time. You know, and I think we can all speak to that. Not so much about the uh, e peeing and people trying to tear each other down as much as it was back in the dark days early on, you know. I mean, gaming itself has changed a lot over the last 20 years, and I think Eve has changed with it. And I think that... Um, That's pretty awesome. I think we're in a much better place um, with gaming in the gaming community in general. You know, there's not as much hate, hate gates and, and, and tear down gates. But then 
you know, we can all learn a little bit from some of the things that have happened. You know, there was the Ed Piscott story in the comic book industry, you know, and Ed um, was an underground artist who was just recently like attacked for a lot of things. And, and he may or may not have uh, deserved some of them because of accusations that came out, but he ended up killing himself, you know, from it. You know, we're not just because we're in a world where, you know, things are not as quite as negative as they were. And, uh, but we're not free of the woods yet. There's still a lot of that left. And I just always like to end saying, you know, if you need help or if you're in a difficult situation or you feel like you can't do anything, you know, there are more than, you know, just broadcast for reps, you know, ask for help, you know, reach out to somebody, DM myself or anyone else that you might think of, we can help you, put put you in touch with the right people. So, you know, just, always um you're not alone and uh we're we're here to help yeah 100 percent agreed yeah they've communities there for each other um do you have any Absolutely. do you have any final shout outs um people you want to give a shout to or recognize anyone in particular well it would be remiss of me not to shout out to the all the good folks in lucifer's hammer which is our um, indie corporation who just spent the last you know number of months putting ten thousand fully fit to frigates all the mods and everything so you know shout out to all the hard work that they put in for this uh crazy adventure that we're about to go on on uh, saturday april 20th awesome thank you so much yeah. anything from you ben thanks uh yeah well like actually i'm my uh, shout out will go to uh the uh broadcast for rep discord i've just uh, put into uh, the chat so people uh, can uh, like uh, hop on there and broadcast for reps uh, like uh, when it's needed And you, awesome. uh, Rain, any shout outs? No, I don't. I just <laughs> want to say thank you, Ricks, for joining us. This has been amazing. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great seeing you again, talking. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm so excited for, um, I feel like there's so much going on in April and I'm like really, really excited for it from an Eve player perspective. Um, yeah, yeah thank you. I, I hope the event goes well. Um, I will try to tune in. I'm probably going to be watching Rush Lock stream while I, um, while I do other things. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody in chat thanks, for the guys. engagement. Bye. See ya. Bye.